what it is. It is your girl Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. I'm the drama life friends and wife. I am the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice, hoping to see justice before it all fades to the black. So I am here out at the library. Yes, loving the little warm sun, but it's not hot. It's not hot. And we um got a little breeze, right? So I'm having a decent day. They gave me the day off. So I'm using it to work on Project Reach the World, which Project Reach the World, girl, if you don't know, you're about to know. I'm gonna link that in the description box about what it is. It is my art for justice. And it's my attempt in using my art to free my husband. From his wrongful 40 year conviction, yes. He's been in prison wrongfully for 21 years. And boy, but if you bring him home today, if you bring him home today, we can salvage some time in his life and as our family life together. You know, we raised our daughter money together through prison visits over the last 21 years, all over the state of Florida, which is not cheap. Y'all know now he's on that Georgia, Florida, Alabama, um, border and it it costs a pretty penny to go see him so it's not cheap but we stayed with him this whole time through his wrongful conviction now i just released a video about discrimination in the workplace i'm gonna work on some other discriminations um i'm getting off on a tangent on this because more than just being black there's other things you're discriminated against like that i don't know it's the human nature when we see differences in each other we have to figure out who's better than who isn't that crazy that doesn't make sense but that's what we do as humans i have got to figure out if you're above me or beneath me <laughs> girl we're the, we're equal i need you and you need me. This is why there is so much trouble in the world because we, you have the answer to my problem and I have the answer to your problem, but our problems will never be solved if we don't, one, have a conversation with one another about these things that's happening. So you have to face the fact first and then, two, have the conversation. Those conversations are going to lead to, hey, I didn't know it was like that. Okay, now I understand why that's like that. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Oh, maybe I should be more open-minded when it comes to people and judge people on an individual basis rather than grouping together and group judging people. So the I, it's doing pretty good. I got discrimination because of hair texture in there. Um, discrimination because of hair color. Then I got ageism. I have been discriminated because of my age, which is crazy. I just released that one. Um, and now I'm, I got another story time that spun out of that one because I was telling you in that video about how um, it was kind of crazy how there was actually kind of isms going on between Latinas and blacks which I, i'm not understanding that like that's another issue that we don't talk about a lot but it's there um and how a lot of our management were latina it is two situations in my theme part that i dealt with that um where the management is latina and a lot of times you're treated differently or it's i don't even think this type of ism is i don't even know if it's purposeful but it happens where um, they tend to treat the black employees, you know, a little different or worse. They don't get as many privileges as they would give their fellow Latinas, which that's not cool. I'm sorry, I, that is not cool. I still love everybody. I still, um, just because I'm telling you about discrimination, I have um, dealt with because of that does not mean I do not like a whole group of people. I judge people, like I said in that video, by who's a goofball. Like, you're a goofball. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what nationality you are. If you're showing goofball tendencies, then you're a goofball. And that's how you will be judged, not by your outer appearance. Oh, yeah. And I also had um, housing discrimination um, from an apartment complex 
whose management was Latina and because of a certain situation, that's a whole different story time, that I was basically put out of my apartment. That's crazy. It gets that major. See, with this discrimination, which discrimination can lead to the isms, that's where it starts. It's just the smallest bit when it's discrimination, but then it's bigger when it turns into the racism and stuff like that in the other isms. Um, but the thing is that it seems small, but it's that detriment that it can affect your living situation. It can affect your job. It can affect your opportunities. And that's not fair that I'm being X'd out because of who I am and who I cannot, um, I can't change who I am. God saw fit that I would be born a black girl, a black woman, and turn into a black woman. I would be born a black girl, turn into a black woman. So I can't help who I am, but I shouldn't be treated differently because of who I am. You understand? And I'm very proud of who I am. But that's why I like tackling this issue so that one, we can open our eyes and then we can address the problems, right? So in telling that story of being um, discriminated at my job because of who I am and treated differently and stuff like that, um, I had touched on this one issue. My contact is really bothering me. Uh, but I touched on this one time where we were at work. Now, y'all know I, I worked at a cartoon themed restaurant right but we would get so busy because our restaurant really was more like a food court when you came in you had pizza you had chicken you had fish you had burgers you had calamari you had all kinds of stuff they had the chicken and waffles they had all types of stuff so it was better for families to come in there because um, everybody can get what they want and then just pay at one time rather than visit different restaurants because this person's feeling like this type of food, this person's feeling like that type of food. And girl, you know, when you in that hot sun with your family and your family getting on the last nerve that you got, girl, you know. You want to hurry up and just get food and go head on, right? You, when that family time turns to, why in the world did I even decide to do this? So our restaurant would be packed during the lunchtime rush. Okay, so we had a group. I don't know. We accommodate tour groups, which is huge, huge groups. And then we accommodate large groups, less 15 people, 20 people, something like that. And regular, you know, groups of families and stuff like that. So that also was a good area for people to come in our tour, in our um, restaurant, because we can accommodate that. Okay, so it was this group that came from England. Um, everybody, I don't know what they were, I don't know nothing about the group, what their group was about, why they were there. I just know everybody in the group had on tutus. They had on these um, tutus that um they made from the little you know the meshy stuff or whatever okay so everybody had that on everybody men women everybody had that the tutus on so i don't know what the tutus meant but that's what that was the group and they were from england okay so they come in and we would have to direct the people where to go how to go through the line because we had so many different food choices people would be confused on how to do like they would think you pay for it first and then go grab your food when in actuality you would grab your food first and then you would pay all together right so we would have to direct you through the line then we would have to take you to the table Remember when I told you that um, story about my cousin saying, you can't walk a beat to the table. It's easy. Walk the walk a beat to the table. You can't do that. Because I was talking about my disabilities, something I have been discriminated against because of disability as well. Um, and so we had to walk the bees to the table, right? So they would come out from the register and I heard this one we're all in our positions now mind you there's black people working there there's white people working there there's latinas working there there's every color like florida is a mixed pot though florida's uh 
leadership is trying to be ran by one population. Florida's a mixed pot. We have a high amount of Haitian um, descendants here. We have a lot of Jamaican, Caribbean, Bahamian. Um, you got Mexican. You got um, Dominican. You, you got every nationality, Asian, ev everything that you can think of here in Orlando. So we're a mixed pot, though our representation tends to be from only one nationality and with only one agenda, not the agenda with all of us in mind. Okay, so they come in and the first thing that we hear the person say, remember I told you I, there was the two Latina um, managers. You have the one that she said she was Afro-Latina and she was proud to be um, black. She said she was black. She treated us the same as everybody else. Now, the other Latina did not treat us the same. She treated other people better than other people. She made differences between us, which was crazy because she acted like she was cool when she won management. But once she became management, she ugh, became a whole different story. But that's not this story. That's the last video. Go check that one out. <laughs> so, anyways, the lady gets up there, one of the um, people from that group, and they said, she said, why do you have so many of them working here? And the cashier looked up like, Huh? Why is it so many of them working here? And she said, who? She said, all these black people. Y'all got all these black people working here. And they're serving us and this and that. And everybody is looking like, huh? <laughs> like what? So she goes on to say, she was like, y'all got all these black people working here. And it's especially the Spanish people, the Spanish speaking black people. And we could not believe the girl, the one that I told you was the Afro Latina, that girl was pacing back and forth. She was like, girl, I'm about to lose my job today. What did she just say? What did she just say? And everybody is looking around confused. Like, why would you come into a restaurant and then complain that it's too many black people working here? Like, I'm so confused. What do you want us to do? You complain if we don't work. You complain if we are working. You complain if this, what do you want us to do? Like, I really don't know. I don't know how to be treated as an individual because it's like no matter how good you are and how much you are the opposite of the stereotypes of a black woman or black male, you're still categorized. So what the heck do you, you don't want us to work? Then what you, <laughs> oh, confusion girl. So she's like, I wanna speak to the manager. I wanna speak to the manager. Why is there so many black people working here? And she go get the manager. And guess what? Uh, squirrel, you better go ahead on. Don't you come over here. I know you better run on up that tree. You better run up that tree. Don't come up here. He sure was looking at me too. Those things are slick. Because I, I had one that um, they used to get up on our lockers and try to get our food. He tried to go on from around here. I told y'all how I was eating that oatmeal every day. I had that oatmeal in my locker and that thing was creeping down on me like that. He was on the top of the locker like he was about to pounce on me. Like them things, woo. I'm not an animal person, y'all. But anyway, back to the story. So the girl, the lady is like, why is there so many of them here? I need to talk to the manager. So what's crazy? We go get the manager for her. Remember the uh, the Afro Latina uh, manager? She walking back and forth. She's the second layer of management, and she's like, "Ooh, I'm about to lose my job today. I'm about to lose my job today." And they trying to calm her down, calm her down. <laughs> Just calm down, girl. <laughs> Just calm down. Remind me of <laughs> martial arts when we <sighs> and then release. <laughs> the manager comes out, and guess what? The manager's black. 
girl. And she was the one of the best managers we ever had. She treated everybody equally. But people hated her for that. Ain't that crazy? She actually did the right thing, but people couldn't stand her. Um, she didn't care who you was. If you was doing the wrong thing, you finna get in trouble. You didn't get no grace periods and stuff like that. Like they like to do when um, they would, it would be one of their own and they'd try to cover their own, but then get on you and ride you like crazy. So um, the black manager comes out and the lady is like shocked. She's like, and she still follows through. Now, if you ask for the manager and then the manager comes out and she just black as everybody else, would you continue to rant about this? Well, the lady continues to rant. Why do you have so many of them working here? And mind you, the manager is one of them, one of us. <laughs> and she's like, ma'am. I'm sorry, you need to calm down because people are here trying to work. People are working. This is their livelihood. Like you can come in and eat, but there's no need to be disrespectful. Now, girl, remember when I told you that other story about my um, manager that was from Chicago that'd be like, you can walk somebody to the table. It ain't brain surgery. When it, it was really, I was legally blind and I couldn't see but I hated to tell my disabilities because people discriminate against disabilities. Crazy. How do you get away from discrimination? We have got to start opening our minds. That's how we get away from it. But um, he would have threw her out. He did not. He would have called the, the security and had them escorted. And when they throw you out, they do not give your money back. But she allowed them to finish eating. She told them that, I'm sorry, you guys got to be respectful. You can't do that. You just can't come into a place. Mind you, we're serving her. Like that place, you used to get in big trouble when you wasn't smiling, just from not smiling. I wore a fake smile many days in that place. And you would get in trouble for, um, you could not disrespect a guest. The, the guest, that's firing terms. So I, I don't understand what was her problem with it being a lot of black people working there. We were working and we were serving them. And even after being mistreated, we still served them. So that's crazy. Like, I don't know. We need to open our minds, guys. Like, for real, for the sake of, you know, we, we good and probably halfway through our lives, right? But for the sake of the babies, for the next generation, do we want to keep going through what we have been through well if we don't change it almost guarantee we will be all right guys next video i'm gonna head back into the library so you see how i got the setup head back into the library upload and then i come back and do my next video <laughs> it's your girl cadillac